Cutting out carving ahead. Um, and uh, so it's got the Drake Red Edge pattern here. And uh, first of all, with the cutout and such, uh, there's, there's different ways you can cut out ahead. The traditional way is um, your side profile trace on a block of wood, cut it out, and go to town carving it, and roughen it out. And then there's another step where you could take it another step further. Um, by taking the side, side profile and, and a top profile pattern and cut it out just like you would a body. Then you'd end up with less work of trying to find things. I'm really lazy, so I go another step. Um, I got the front profile. So I've got three patterns that I'm working with. Now, safety, safety. Make sure your blade and your bandsaw is sharp and watch your fingers as could be dangerous doing it this way, but it saves a lot of time. Um, so the key to this though is having a nice square block of wood. Um, and having it square so it stays nice and true in your bandsaw. If it's, if it's off a little bit, you're, when you cut it all out, you'll be disappointed. You'll be wondering why, why is that cheek higher on one side than the other? Or why is the, the forehead skinnier on one side than the other? So the key is to have a nice square block of wood that runs parallel in with your bandsaw. So on having your bandsaw cut and your table cut at a 90 part as well. Um, so once I get a, a block squared up, um, I'll draw a center line down through the top and through the front. Then I'll trace my pattern on to the side profile. So, and then uh, I'll take uh, my top pattern, lay that on center, got a center line drawn on my bill, and then, or the head, and throw the whole thing. So I'll line that up to the center line on my block. When you're drawing this on, make sure that you know the head part of the uh, pattern lines up with the head side profile so you don't get mixed around. Um, draw, let me just trace that on. Now I block the wood, it's pretty tight to the pattern and I, I like doing that. If you are a little nervous about the band sawing part, make your block a little bigger, that's fine. The reason I do it kind of tight is when I'm all done, I just peel it all off and voila, you got your head. So I got my top profile drawn on the block. Now I'll take my front profile and draw that on the front. lines there that's for stop and I generally just kind of stop in here somewhere I don't go all the way down so I stop up higher so that's kind of prep before bandsaw I'll pass this around that you can see it you start with it when you drill tap for the ice top oh. you use a smaller bit yeah begin with to do your tap hole across yeah I, I use that's probably maybe eighth inch of that now I've got a drill press so that makes it nice to where I can, so it's a good point for bringing that up. So before I bandsaw it out, I'll drill that hole through there. So when you get your, your cutout done, as you can kind of see on this one, there's a hole. And that's why I pre-drilled when I, before I bandsaw it out. It makes it a lot easier to find You still can eyes. move the eye to, yeah. to work. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, this ends up not being the center of my eye. Um, it, but it's a good guide. It's generally, it, it all, nine or ten times out of ten, it's in there somewhere. It's within <laughs> my eyes with where that hole's at somewhere. It might be, the side might be to the front of it, it might be to the back. 
but uh, a lot of what I do, um, what I base that on, once I, a lot of that is how, how you carve your bill. You carve this bill into the head, then I take the divider and measure from the top, top of that bill back to these channel, these eyes, it's an actual casting of a stall, so it's, it's pretty accurate. So I take that measurement from there to the front of the eye, and I take the measurement from there to the back of the eye, and I'll go into this more detail next month, because I'll finish off carving the, the head around the eyes and to show you kind of how I do it, and then get that eye placement. But good point, yeah, before I cut it out, I take a drill press and drill it through, or if you got a jig of some sort, I know you can get jigs, for a fairly reasonable price with it, and then that'll shoot you through. On that, you see it doesn't go all the way through. My bit isn't long enough to get all the way through, but after it's all said, done, and cut out, it's, it's it shows up sooner or later. So, <laughs> so. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, we'll go on the, the cutting process here. I kind of drew a larger block on on here, my art drawing skills. Um, um, there's a different color here. So cutting it out, I always start on the top first, number one. So what I do is just like you're cutting out your body, I'll start in over here in the back, boop, 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 come in, stop just before going out, pull back out, come in on this side, come in, Stop, pull back, forward. So you're still in block form. Very important. Coming in from the front, do the same thing. Coming in, stop before going out. Coming in, stop before going, and then pull back out. Still in a block. And then uh, number two, I cut out the front. So I'm going to come in up here. Stop before going out, still in block form. Coming in here, stop before going out. And come back, so you still still got a solid block. Yep. Did you hold the wood as you would carve on it? Oh. Some people might not see it. Oh, but yeah. This is going to be on end when you do that. Yeah. That second cut. Yeah. Yep, gotcha. Start blade running, boop it the boop, and then you know, like that, coming around this way and that way. And then the top profile, it's on end like this. My the top of the head is this end here where the blade's coming in, coming in like this and pulling back out in and out. So your fingers are always back here. I always try to keep the fingers back here. <coughs> And uh, if the blade's coming this way, I got my fingers on this side, so if anything is going to come out, your finger, <coughs> fingers aren't going to go in it. Uh, do you find uh, that you have to wrap it with uh, masking tape once in a while to keep those parts that are almost cut off? I haven't. To avoid but, moving? Yeah, I haven't, but <coughs> it's not a bad idea. So the big thing here, too, is this part that's on your table is flat so it's not rocking. This one isn't the best, but you want it flat so it's like this isn't going to rock on you. It's tight to the table. It's not going to rock, tip, want to tip and twist on you. So check both sides. You can draw your, you can draw this end pattern on any side, either side. Check which side is nice and flat for you. It won't tip on you. You can see it. What size blade do you use for that time blade? I have about a quarter inch. About a quarter? Five sixteenths. Four five sixteenths quarter. It's a quarter inch. Yeah. yeah so then when it comes to the side, just laying it, laying this block flat like this. And so then you can get this. And this disappears. And now here, you can get rid of the block form. Just buzz in here, up and around, all the way through and around and out. Here, just finish this and out. Now we got the side profile done. Um, so this isn't going to go anywhere or rock on you because you got your you got enough pieces in place. And it's not going to on you. 
So when you're all said and done after cutting it all out, you end up with these. <coughs> end up with a duck head. Wow. And uh, this, so you kind of look at it, and like, can you imagine how much time that's going to save you? Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, the time, it just, I don't know, saves me a lot of time and keeps keeps things <coughs> truer for me because somewhere in here is the widest part. Somewhere in here is the widest part. You just got to find it and, and uh, you're just rounding things off at this point. It's not, um, not real complicated. So just now I, I always draw a center line on first. Down the middle. Now, unless you want to change your pattern, that center line never comes off. Got the center line drawn on. And then I'll just, I like chip carving with, with knives. So, I got one that's bent here, or one that's not. Just uh, chip carving, rounding it off. This happens to be too below, so fast wood and cedar, you'd have a hard time carving this way. You'd have to be carving out this way, but it's too below. Before I do this, I honestly would carve the bills first, like what Frank did last month. I, I generally start with the bills because then you invest all this time on the easy part of rounding something off, and then you work on your bill, and if something doesn't go right, then it's, it's hard to just toss it aside. So I usually start with the bills first and get the bills done, and then that way your time is invested there, and if it works out great, move on. If it doesn't, then you don't have as much time into it. So. You don't poop many of them anyway, though. Oh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you hear about, Bob? The decoy forum? Okay. So what I'm kind of doing is just rounding the crown here, and I, once I get going on it, you kind of see it's starting to take some shape on the one side, and then uh, you can see it in this one for sure. You know, it, it's kind of oval shaped, round, and uh, when I'm carbon ducks, even in the bodies or, or anything, I'm always doing stuff like this, and you can kind of see flat spots. If you see them, then you know it's like, well, I gotta take something out of there. So I'm constantly, as I'm working stuff, I'll put my hands across, put that across there. You don't have the cheeks in your way. You can actually see the, the crown and you can see the roundness. Showing the dowels, I doll my heads into the bodies. And uh, I picked up this thing at a show. It's got a metal pin with a sanding pad, it's kind of heavy, heavy base that's attached to it, but you can put that on there in your bowl and sand it nice, get it nice and flat, and you can put it in the head as well, but the first thing is to line, line things up to where you want them. With that kit came one of these cylinders, it's a heavy, solid piece of steel, it's got a 
hole in there for a 3 8 inch drill bit and two other small holes for putting a screw in. Two screws. that match on the front, back, and side to side. So if I transfer these onto here, and I got that cross on there that should match this on here. And I take this little thing here, and I got it marked here on the sides, front, back. I line all those up. Is that just the straight hole? Yep. Just to get a straight hole. This is my power drill. So if anyone has a machine shop or knows how to make, make these, would be handy. I don't. We got that from a vendor. That's all he sold at an old thought on one of the shows. And I haven't seen it around in a couple years. So. Is that steel or is it? I think it's pretty heavy. I think it's steel. I take a 3 8 drill bit and stick it in the hole and drill it out. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's why now it's, uh, then you take this deal and put that in there and sand it so your band saw or your, you are quite accurate. It makes a nice flat surface. You've got it going there. Doll it. Boom, it's right where you want it. It makes a nice seam. You can turn it. One thing I also want to point out, well, I think we might have pointed out the patterns, but um, if you keep the shelf of the body parallel to the table, you know, flat spot versus angling down or angling back, and that way when you put your head on, you can turn it any way and it's not going to be, it's going to be, you know, right. If you, say, you change this angle and you, now you have to put this head on there. You put it this way, it's going to work fine as long as you got that same angle on the side profile or the head cut out. Let's say you can't. Your head's going to be kind of cocked like this because you don't want to call it. 